Hi and welcome back! If you are new here, I'm Luisa and on this channel we are talking everything about Portugal and especially Algarve because this is the area where we bought an apartment and we are living right now. In today's video we are talking about how the story ended with us trying to pay back to the bank a big chunk of our loan or at least for us it was big. We took a loan for paying for that house and we want to pay back to the bank as soon as possible. I have a video about uh, going to the bank and signing uh, those papers. I will link it here and in the description. But for those who already watched that video, you know that we didn't know back then if we are going to be successful in cutting back the years of the loan and not the rate because apparently here in Portugal it's not a thing to cut back on the period of the loan, just to cut back on the value of the, in the rate that you are paying monthly. If you didn't watch that video, please go watch it before this in order this to make more sense. So as a short resume, we went back to Lagoa like a month ago at the end of, I don't know, no, it was two months ago, February, something like that. And we signed the papers for repaying back a chunk of the loan. And then the lady from the bank said that here in Portugal, it's not a custom or it's very hard to cut back on the years of the loan. So what she did, uh, she cut back first the monthly rate, so we paid like uh, 475 euros per month and we had the loan for 30, 30 years. And she said we cannot uh, reduce the period of the loan, we have to cut back on the rate. So the first thing that she did, she cut back the rate and for a month and a little, we didn't have to pay 475 euros, we had to pay 365 or something like that. And we were still have to pay the loan for like 30 years. But for a month and a half, we were insisting that she talk to the Lisbon office where all the big decisions are made. And after two months, we were able to do that. With a lot of emails and a lot of insisting, she was wonderful and she managed to convince the people in Lisbon to do that but uh, they did that in not such an orthodox way or not in the way that we are used to doing things in Romania so um, we ended up the final result was that we reduced the period of the loan with like seven years but we don't pay the same amount like we paid before we paid a little more because what happened really was that this whole procedure had two steps fortunately we didn't have to go back to the bank and sign more papers but still the operation was made from two steps so first they took the, the total amount of the loan and they reduced it with the amount that we paid back and they spread that amount Amount over a period of 30 years and this is why uh, we had uh, for a period a lower amount then we insisted that we don't want that and say and they said okay what period do you want now the loan to have and we kind of chose we said this amount of years and we reduced from the 30 years like six or seven years, seven years, I guess. And they just, based on our request, they just took the remain of the loan and just divided by the years that we said that we wanted. And this is why the rate didn't remain the same. In our country, we don't do things like that. The rate remains the same and the calculus in the back are made different but what it is important is that the main goal was achieved and without going back to the bank and we have a slight increase in the rate so now we are not paying like 465 like before we are paying like 485 something like that but it doesn't matter because 30 euros uh, added to our rate it's it's nothing so it's okay i don't know if my explanation make much sense but uh, the conclusion of this is that things in portugal can be done in your way if you insist and you have patience and if you find people who are willing to help like our lady from the bank and 
In general, if you know what you want and stick with it and you have the patience and the resilience to just uh, keep at it because in the final moment they did what we wanted and this is the most important thing to us. And the next year, like we are now in March and uh, in the January of uh, 2022, we are going to do the same thing all over again. But uh, I guess, uh, I hope that now they are kind of used to what we want and it's going to get uh, smoother and smoother. Anyway, uh, our plan is to pay the remaining of the loan in like uh, four years. So um, one year has passed and we have only three years to go. We don't know if you are going to have the same amount of money like we did uh, last year or this year, but our plan is to pay the loan in just four years. And now because we are still confined in our homes and I cannot wait for the 6th of April when I understand the um, restaurants are going to be open and we are going to be allowed to stay outside, not inside, just outside at the terrace. And then I guess I will be able to move between Concelios and film in another uh, towns and finally provide the content for this channel that uh, this channel was meant to have content about travel to Portugal and about different uh, towns in Portugal. Until then, I am going to answer some of your questions because I think your questions on uh, the comments on this uh, YouTube channel are pretty interesting and they are mainly about the life here in Portugal. So I think they will be kind of interesting for everybody. So these questions are for Strawberries1411. Strawberries1411 is a very die hardcore fan of this channel. Uh, she, I think, is a she. She is with me uh, since the beginning of this channel. So I thank you so much for always being here and always uh, interacting with me. And uh, you write the most beautiful comments ever. And you are always kind of there with a nice word to say, even when you don't totally agree with my content because um, this is so important uh, to, I don't know, to, to say what you want to say, even if it's not uh, something you agree with, but in a nice way. This relates also with uh, my previous video in which I say that I uh, get some nasty comments sometimes and I just kind of observe that you are always have a nice thing to say, even if um, you are not agreeing with me. And I really, really appreciate this. Thank you very much for being here. And the questions are, since uh, you and Flavius can work remotely, you have plans to stay longer in Portugal in the future. Our plans to stay in Portugal in the future are like, we want to move here. We cannot move here right now because all our money are made in Romania. With the situation in the world and the pandemic, everything that, ha that happens, that uh, enable us to work more remotely. We fortunately been able to negotiate with the boss, with the um, employer of Flavius to let him work remotely because this was the main concern and also I was able to reduce, to downsize my business and to, to be able to make accounting from a distance remotely. So far so good, it was okay. We don't know if in the future we can maintain the same um, level of remoteness. <laughs> I don't know if this is a word. So we don't know. Until now we have been able to do that because uh, the people were understanding because of the situation in the world. Of course the situation in the world in my opinion is gonna take at least until the end of this year. So at least until the end of this year, we are going to be able to work remotely. Of course, the problem is not with me because I, uh, my plan is to reduce the business as uh, much as it is necessary in order for us to stay here. But the problem is always with the, um, the job of Flavius and it's not even a question of money. I mean, the money is important, of course, but we would be able to sustain ourselves based on the other money the, that he is doing because he is working for a big uh, attorney firm for his boss, but also he has his own clients and we would be able to sustain ourselves only from his own clients. But the fact is that he wants to maintain it, his joy to work 
for this another firm and we don't really want to 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 lose that because it enriches his life and because uh, he was able to maintain this uh, job he was able to accept uh, more easily the fact that we are now here in Portugal. The plan is to move here but uh, not this year. I don't know what it will happen in 2022 because nobody really knows but yeah I want to move here like permanently this was our plan all along. Also, you asked if um, when um, you are in Portugal, do you miss Romania, family, friends and other things? <laughs> uh, well, um, no, the, the short answer is no, <laughs> but uh, I feel I ha uh, like I have to explain. So uh, we don't miss family because we don't see family as much. We don't live in the same city as our family and we only see family on Christmas and on Easter. And now with the whole situation last year, we didn't see family neither on Christmas or on Easter time. So uh, really nothing uh, has changed just because uh, we moved here to Portugal. In terms of uh, missing friends, we are not missing friends because we don't have friends. We have like three or four friends in total, so um, I can really say which are our friends because there are three or four persons. There is the boss of Flavius and he, of course, I think he misses him, I don't know, but he talks with him on a daily basis on the phone, sometimes he FaceTimes him, so yeah, he misses him, but in the same, same time they talk on a daily basis. It's, um, we have another friend who is an attorney also, a lawyer, and um, they also speak on a daily basis. He has another friend uh, which is in England, in the UK, so we didn't really saw him. We miss him, but uh, the fact uh, that we moved to Portugal doesn't change this, this fact because we didn't see him when we were in Romania. And we have also another friend who is actually uh, my friend and uh, through me she met Flavius and she is also a client but she lives now in UK so we also don't uh, see each other much because she is there and she lives there now. We oh and we have another friend also he who is in, in the IT business but we don't uh, see him also because he is the type of person who doesn't like to, I don't know, to, to meet people. Uh, not even before the pandemic, we didn't see each other much because uh, he's that type of person, he and his wife, who don't really like to, to sit at a cafe. We are friends and we help each other and we talk, but we don't actually see each other because we are that, that type of persons and they are that, that type of persons and I guess this is one of the reasons why we remain friends over the years. And this is kind of it. <laughs> I mean, we don't miss friends because we don't have friends and the friends that we have from different circumstances, we don't see each other in real life. But what I do miss from Romania is my house and my comforts there. And also Flavius misses that very much, you know, that um, pillow and that sofa and that TV and that um, underfloor heating and all the comforts that there are there in our home in Romania and we don't have yet here. So we do miss that. So I really meant it when I said that uh, we are a very secluded person and we have uh, a certain type of relationship with our friends or other people that are just restricted at um, you know if you need something I help you if I need something you help me but we don't really <laughs> see each other <laughs> I don't know if um, this is going to make sense for a lot of people but this is our situation also strawberry 1411 ask me if uh, you have chosen to live near the sea do you enjoy the water swimming boating and fishing. I do enjoy the water for one particular reason is because um, of this, because uh, it helps me when I see the water, it helps me with my uh, mental health, it helps me to stay grounded, the sound of the water helps me to stay calm 
and to think of something else other than my problems. It's like hypnotizing sound. And when I see the waves, it really calls me that movement. So it's a very specific and particular reason why I feel drawn to the water is because it helps me with my mental state and mental health. I like to go on a boat. I don't have the occasion to go on boats. Maybe we will meet in the future with people here who have boats and they will invite us. I don't know. I like to go on a cruise every time I get the chance, but cruises here in um, Algarve are mainly with a lot of people on, on board. I guess that's okay too. We are going to do that if you are going to, to, to have occasion to do that this year but we avoid this because of the, the many people who are getting on that boat. Private tours are very expensive, but maybe we are going to do that at least once. And I don't like fishing at all. I tried it in Romania and I don't like it. Maybe fishing in the sea, it's another whole experience, but I didn't try that either. Maybe, maybe we will try it, I don't know. And uh, I like swimming, yes, but not in the actual sea, because in the actual sea there are stuff like fishes and, and um, algaes and stuff like this. And to be really frank, I'm scared of them, but I really like to swim in the pool, yes. And every time I get the occasion, I go to a hotel with a nice pool and I swim there. So yeah. This is kind of what I like about the sea and why um, I chose to move uh, near the sea because of my mental tranquility and health. A question on my Instagram account. If you don't follow me on Instagram, there I post uh, some pictures from the Algarve and also in the stories you get to see more of my uh, day. If you are interested, you can uh, subscribe to my uh, Instagram account. So Rob from Florida, who is also a die-hard fan uh, of this channel, thank you Rob for always following me and also uh, he's uh, following me most intensely on Instagram. He is asking me what's the nightlife like and dancing. Well, Rob, I don't know how is the nightlife because uh, of um, also very particular reasons. One is that um, we are not much of people who are getting out of the house on the night time because we are lazy and by six or seven, we feel like staying in bed on the sofa at the TV eating something. So even we we are like 40 years old, not yet, but kind of that age, we feel like we don't like to go out on the night time. And also we don't like to go out on the night time because I'm afraid of getting in the car on the night. I'm also afraid to go in the car by day, but uh, by night I feel like there is also more danger. So we absolutely avoid to be in the car on the road at that uh, point in time. And another reason why we are not uh, outside on the night time is because all the things that are flying, you know, all the bugs and other stuff that are flying, and I'm really, really scared of that. So also I avoid to be outside on the nighttime because of that. So <laughs> um, we have very particular reasons of why we design our life in a certain way. Of course, we have here in the resort a prasa, um, gathering place with all the restaurants and there uh, in the season you also have a live band who is singing so you can go, go there and have a, and experience a little bit of the night life also in the high season in august there you have uh, like mini parties with people who are dancing but uh, this is kind of Eat. We go there sometimes, but uh, we don't stay long because we get tired very easily. And uh, like I said, all the things that are flying and all the people and the noise. 
and we just prefer to be at home by ourselves. But it's not like uh, Algarve is short on the nightlife. If you go to Albufeira, you have parties upon parties and bike rolls and you have people dancing in the streets, drunk people, um, sober people. You have all sorts of distractions there. So if you are a person who likes nightlife, you have nightlife here in Algarve and not uh, only the type of nightlife that you find in Albufeira for tourists and people who, who like bars and music and uh, loud music and dancing, but also in um, cities like Tavira, but not only Tavira, all sorts of other places, you can go to fado bars and uh, maybe dan dance like um, classic dances like uh, tango or, I don't know, society dances if you are into things like that. And also the, you can find here um, Latino dancing like uh, salsa, bachata, things like that. Also classes. So you have a myriad of possibilities if you like to go out and have fun uh, in the nighttime. Just that I don't know about it because we don't like to do that. Someone else is saying that um, he or she would like to know about driving licenses. Since both Romania and Portugal are EU countries, do you have to take the driving uh, test to get the Portugal license? And if yes, was the process simple? Because uh, I think that this person saw me driving in my previous video and uh, wondered about uh, the li driving license. Well, I read about it and what I gathered is like that, that uh, if you are not a resident in Portugal, which we are not, we are not Portugal residents. We are not residents and the NIF we got, it's a non-resident NIF. So we are not residents in Portugal and because uh, Romania and Portugal are in the European Union, the driving license I have in Romania is recognized automatically and I uh, am able to drive with my Romanian driving license up to 186 days, like half a year a lot of time. So I don't have to do anything. I can drive in Portugal with my Romanian driving license. But if I were to become a resident in Portugal, then I wouldn't be able to drive with my um, Romanian driving license for uh, this uh, longer amount of time. I would be able to drive with my Romanian um, license only three months, 90 days. But after that, I would have to apply to change my permit from Romanian to Portuguese. I wouldn't ha have to uh, get an uh, exam, so I don't have to take the exam all over again. I just file some paperwork, I pay a fee like 30 euros, and uh, the driving license is automatically recognized and prescribed. But this I will do when I will become a resident, and I'm not going to become a resident if I'm not going to move here permanently. As long as we are going back and forth, there is no need for me or us to become residents. And uh, when you become residents, you have a time like two years to prescribe. You can drive only for three months, but if you are not driving, you have two years to prescribe the driving license. After two years, if you don't bother to prescribe your um, license from a new European country, you, then and only then you will be required to take the drive test all over again, of course, on the Portuguese law and language and everything. So uh, if you are uh, someone who's coming to Portugal to actually live here full time and become a resident, you can drive with your license from a European country up to 90 days, three months. After that, you cannot drive with it, but you have up to two years to prescribe it. Just file the papers and they give you a Portuguese one. You don't have to do anything else. But if two years passed, then you have to take the exam. What about television? You can see, for example, US television, UK television, TV from other EU countries. I understand that this can be done using a VPN, but I wasn't sure what international offering does the TV company in your area offers. 
Well, I have, a, of course, a special situation. Uh, as you know, if you are a, a recurrent visitor of this uh, YouTube channel, our provider of internet is Laser Telecom. It's not mail, it's not uh, something uh, that you are used to here in Portugal. Some big firm is Laser Telecom. Laser Telecom is a firm who provides internet services and TV services only here in um, uh, the Golden Triangle. I mean, um, Almansil. Quinta do Lago, Val do Lobo, and uh, the areas in between that space. So only the Golden Triangle. Um, this uh, firm is aimed and made especially for the expats who are living in this area. So of course they provide international um, TV and we have this included in our um, monthly subscription. This is one of the reasons why our monthly subscription is 60 euros. Uh, besides of the very good quality internet, we have also these international uh, posts and we have like 200 of them. I never really counted them, but there are posts from UK, from the US, Germany, Belgium, Romania, <laughs> if someone is interested in that. Of course, we have uh, Spain, also Portuguese, of course. So uh, we are watching only US and UK and these, these are um, our main interest and we are watching that. Sometimes I watch the RTL ones, I guess these are from Belgium, and just because Poirot uh, and The Murder She Wrote with Angela Lesbury is um, transmitted there. So um, this is what we watch and it's enough for us. But I don't know if this answer helps you because the main uh, providers of uh, television here in um, Portugal, like Meo and NOS, they don't provide uh, this. Uh, to my knowledge, they don't provide this. You have to acquire a separate, like you said, a VPN or a separate um, service to get access to these international uh, posts. So we have this included because this laser firm is aimed to expats who wants to see UK and US and other kinds of uh, international posts. But normally you wouldn't get that here. In Portugal, you have to pay uh, a, a special subscription for that. Oh, uh, a question that, uh, yes, uh, I, I am so glad I got this question because it was a problem about laundry. Laundry, I noticed a machine in your kitchen. I understand some machine wash and dry one unit. Do you have one? If yes, do, you, uh, do they work well? If not, do you hang clothes to dry? Oh my God, I hate to hang clothes to dry because of uh, how they look when I get out on my terrace. I don't want to see all that clothes there, but mainly because uh, it's so much work. I mean, you have to uh, get the clothes out. You have to go on the stairs or where, where the terrace is. You have to put the clothes and then you have to take it out and put it in the closet. Oh my God, so much work. So I don't know why people are doing that and not just buy a washing machine who also dries the clothes. I'm used to have a washing and dryer all in one and this is what I bought here in Portugal. And this is a major, major help. So I save all that trouble, not to, to think about the fact that uh, uh, there are, were many times when I just forgot the clothes in the washing machine. They, they are all wet, like two days in a row. I just forgot them there. This was a major problem because I had to wash them all over again. <laughs> I bought this in Vorten, so they have here this kind of um, things. It's not like you have to buy them from Amazon or something like that. They have here. It costs like 500 euros. I don't know exactly, but I think 550 euros, something like that. We were concerned about what are we going to do with our old machine, because uh, when we bought the apartment, we found here a machine that was only for washing. And um, what are we going to do with that? Because uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, to, to get into our apartment, you have to walk a few stairs, like five or six stairs. And uh, we were concerned, what about that? And they were kind enough to just take to come and take the old washing machine and put that instead. I just want to, to say that the machine that we had here uh, that was only for washing, it worked, it worked perfectly, but I just couldn't get used to not having a dryer. So we just 
bought a new one just because I needed that dryer. There are a lot of people here who are just hanging the clothes, even here in the resort I see on the balconies and you can do that if you want, but for me, it's a major, major hassle. And this was one of the first things I've changed. Uh, I needed the dryer and I needed a new sofa. These was the two uh, improvement, major improvements that cost a lot of money that I uh, felt that I needed and I could absolutely not live without. So yeah, this is about, about laundry, a big, uh, a big help for me. Oh, she says that in the US it's not common to have one machine that washes and dries. So you have, I understand that you have two washing machine, one and dryer separately. No, because um, it takes up a lot of space and um, it's not like uh, they are more efficient if you have two separate. And think about it, if you have two separate, that means that defeats uh, the purpose. I mean, my purpose. That means that you have to take out the, the laundry from the washing machine and put it into the dryer machine and I would completely forgot to do that uh, here with uh, just one item you have a program and you don't have to think about setting also the dryer you set at the beginning dryer uh, washing and dryer and you just forget about it so it's it, it's easier to have one because of the space because of the commodity and because you don't forget to set and to just move the the clothes from one to another and it works per to perfection it it doesn't uh, diminish the quality just because it's two in one and i don't mind these bothering questions because they are not bothering at all i really like to talk about my life here i am concerned uh, just not to be a bother for you who wants to see beautiful things and nice restaurants and nice things to eat and not to just uh, be told about the washing machine here in Portugal. So for me, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk about these things. And if you have more practical questions, please leave it in the comments and I will do more of these videos. So for me, for me, it's okay to, to receive and talk about these things. So this is all for today, people. I hope you find uh, these uh, interesting and let me know in the comments. Maybe I will do more in the future. Until next next time stay safe stay uh, confident and joyous and have a good week and i will see you in my next one bye